So here we go. This is the first big theorem of this section. So we want to let t from rn to rm be a linear transformation. So just as before with the 2 by 2 case, we want to make sure that we keep in mind the definition of a linear transformation and those properties that arise. So if t from rn to rm is a linear transformation, then there exists a unique matrix A such that the image of vector x under the action of t is equal to matrix A times vector x for all vector x in Rn. So we need to prove this, and there's two things that we need to prove here. We need to prove that this matrix exists, the standard matrix of t, we need to prove that this exists, and then we also need to go ahead and, and prove that this matrix is unique. So we've got a two-part proof here. So for part one, the goal is to show that matrix A exists. So we already again looked at this in that two by two case, but we're extending this to higher dimensions here. But the setup for the proof is the same. So to begin, let's go ahead and let I sub N be the N by N identity matrix. And of course, we know that the column vectors of our identity matrix are the elementary vectors. So we can even further take this one step further and say that the identity matrix, the n by n identity matrix, has column vectors e sub 1, vector e sub 2, and all the way up to the elementary vector e sub n. So there is our n by n identity matrix. Now, in order to attain that standard matrix of T, we need to take this vector x in Rn and decompose it. So we want to let vector x be some arbitrary vector in Rn, and we want to decompose this vector into a linear combination of the elementary vectors of our identity matrix. So here we go. Since vector x is in Rn, we know it has n entries. So we have entry x sub 1, x sub 2, la la la, all the way down to x sub n. And we know now that we can rewrite this as a linear combination of the elementary vectors. So we have x sub 1 multiplied by the elementary vector e sub 1, plus x sub 2 multiplied by the elementary vector e sub 2. And this continues all the way up to that nth term. So we have x sub n times the elementary vector e sub n. And we can even note here, that since this is a linear combination, this is such that x sub 1, x sub 2, all the way to x sub n are the weights, or the scalars, or the coefficients. So now that we have rewritten vector x in terms, or as a linear combination of these elementary vectors, we want to use this form to rewrite the image of vector x x under the action of t. Now, since t is a linear transformation, we know from this definition that our transformation, our linear transformation t, preserves the operations of vector addition and scalar multiplication. So we can take the image of vector x under the action of t and using the rewritten or the decomposition of vector x, so have that x sub 1 times the elementary vector e sub 2, or e sub 1 plus x sub 2 times the elementary vector e sub 2, all the way up to x sub n times the elementary vector e sub n. And now again, since t is a linear transformation, it preserves vector addition and scalar multiplication, which allows us to rewrite this image as the sum of these scalar multiples of the images. So we have x sub 1 times the image of the elementary vector e sub 1 under the action of t, plus x sub 2 times the image of the elementary vector e sub 2 under the action of t, plus all the way to plus x sub n times the image of the elementary vector e sub n under the action of t. 
So we have the vector equation form, which we, of course, know is equivalent to the matrix equation. So we put all of these vectors, aka the images, we put those into our standard matrix. So these are the column vectors of our standard matrix. And this is multiplied by vector x. We have x sub 1, x sub 2, all the way down to that nth term, x sub n. And this is exactly what we wanted. We have matrix A, which is defined, or whose columns are defined by the images of the elementary vectors under the action of t, multiplied by vector x, that vector in Rn. And so matrix A exists. Woohoo! So that ends the first part of our proof. And again, we want to note here, we'll make one final love note, that this is the standard matrix of T. So this matrix, whose column vectors are defined by the images of the elementary vectors under the action of our transformation T, is the standard matrix of T. So that same exact proof that we looked at for the transformation from R2 to R2, except now we have the transformation from Rn to Rm. So now that we know that this matrix exists, we need to now show that this matrix is also unique. Here we go, the second part of our proof. So here, we want to let matrix A be the standard matrix of our linear transformation T, as we have just shown in part 1. Now, we also want to go ahead and let T from Rn to Rm be a linear transformation such that the image of vector x under the action of T is defined as matrix B times vector x, where B is some m by n matrix, and vector x is some vector in Rn. So the goal, again, is to show here that if A is the standard matrix of our linear transformation T, then matrix A must be equal to matrix B, thus making matrix A unique. So here we go. Now, we're going to start just by thinking about A as the standard matrix of our linear transformation T. So we can say that since matrix A is the standard matrix of T, then we know the following. So if matrix A is the standard matrix of the linear transformation of T, then we know that matrix A is defined, or is a matrix whose columns are defined by the images of the elementary vectors under the action of T. So we have the column vector defined as the image of elementary vector E sub 1 under the action of T, and this continues. And now let's add an arbitrary column vector in here defined by the image of the jth elementary vector under the action of T, all the way up to that nth elementary vector, or the image of that nth elementary vector under the action of T. And this is such that, again, vector E sub J, so this is the jth elementary vector, the jth column vector of the identity matrix. So this will be where j is greater than or equal to 1, less than or equal to n. And we want to be sure here to introduce this jth elementary vector, this arbitrary image, because it's arbitrary. So if it holds true for the arbitrary vector, it holds true for all vectors. All right. So thinking about this definition of the standard matrix of our linear transformation, we can say that since the image of vector x under the action of t is defined as matrix B multiplied by vector x, then by matrix vector multiplication, we can observe the following.
So let's use this image to think about the image of the elementary, the jth elementary vector under the action of t. So again, since we're defining the image of vector x under the action of t as the matrix B times vector x, this is going to be equivalent to matrix B multiplied by the jth elementary vector. So let's simply expand this out to really appreciate what this is telling us. So we have matrix B. So we have matrix B whose column vectors are vector B sub 1, and we'll have our jth column vector in here all the way up to the nth column vector, B sub n. So there's matrix B, and this is being multiplied by the jth elementary vector. So all of the entries of this vector are 0, except for that jth term. So now by matrix vector multiplication, we can observe the following. So if we go ahead here and apply the formal definition of matrix vector multiplication, we can say that this is going to be equal to 0 times vector b sub 1 plus 0 times vector b sub 2 plus do 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 all the way up until that jth term. Now the jth term will be 1 times vector b sub j. And then this continues all the way to 0 times vector b sub n. So all that this is going to leave us with is vector b sub j. And this is such that vector b sub j, of course, is the jth column vector of matrix B. So we have shown that the image of the jth elementary vector under the action of T is equal to the jth column vector of B. Now wait a second. In order for both of these statements to be true, the vector B sub J must also be the jth column of matrix A. So for both statements to be true, so for both statements to be true, vector B sub J must also be the jth column vector of matrix A. And we can pretty easily see this by looking at what we have above, but just to make this extra crystal clear, let's think about this. So we have matrix A is the standard matrix of our linear transformation, T. So you have the column vectors are defined by the images of these elementary vectors under the action of T. And what we find in the second case is that all of these images are in fact equal to the columns of matrix B. So matrix A must be equal to matrix B, therefore making matrix A unique. Woohoo! So we have completed the second part of our proof by showing that matrix A is in fact unique.